Hello, my name is Matt Winters, service specialist with Great Plains Manufacturing here in Salina, Kansas. I'd like to talk with you today about the process of downloading software from our dealer access website for use to update the planners. Um, we'll talk about downloading it onto a laptop, loading that software onto an SD card the proper way, and then the procedure for updating it onto a Yield Pro planner, which we're also connected with here. To start out with, we're going to be on our uh, public website, greatplainsag.com. If you notice in the upper side of the window there, there's a link that says dealer access. If you click on that, that's going to take you to a sign-in window, which I have opened up down here already. If you do not know your sign-in information to get to dealer access, you can contact your service manager or the person responsible for ordering your parts on the internet and they can get that information for you to sign in. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my dealer access. The next thing it's gonna ask for is your dealer ID number. And once you're in the dealer ID, then you're, you get to the dealer access screen that we're wanting to look at. We've got several columns in here. The one that we're interested in is the one that says service and support. We want to follow that down until we see software upgrades and go ahead and click on that. That'll take us to a link where we're looking at for our current software updates. We're doing one for the Working Set Master 2 or the main computer on the planner and we're also doing one for RowPro. So we'll start out with clicking on this top one for the Working Set Master 2. And on this link, you're going to see, uh, this page, you're going to see three more links. One for the service bulletin that relates to the current software update. The next link is the software itself. And then the third link down here is a PDF uh, downloadable file of the instructions on how to perform the update. Okay, once I click on the software update, it's going to ask me where I want to save it. I want to click on Save As. And I want to save it on the desktop and click Save. And then if I open up my desktop window, I should see this zip file here on my desktop. And that is the zip file of the software. And we're going to work with that here in a little bit. I'll go ahead and open my window back up. And we're going to back out of that. And next, we're going to look at the RowPro software update. So go ahead and click on that. Again, we're looking at three links. We've got the service bulletin that relates to this software update, the software download itself, and then the PDF downloadable file of the instructions. So we'll click on download, the little drop down window next to save, go save as, click your desktop, and then save. And we're done with that. So I should have now two zip files on my desktop. Yep, there's one and there's the other one. We're going to download these onto SD cards. They need to be no bigger than two gigabytes to use in the 10 inch terminal. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I've, I've got an SD card slot in my laptop. If your laptop or computer doesn't have one, you can buy SD card readers fairly cheaply and plug them into a USB port. I'm going to go ahead and insert this card. And it's going to come up here and, and tell me that it just saw a new SD card. What I want to do is go to my computer. And I want to find that SD card and I want to right click on it. And I want to click format. And the reason I want to do this is when you do a software update, this card needs to have nothing else on it. Now, if you've got a card that has some information, you need to get it saved off and saved onto your computer somewhere. When I do this format process, it's gonna wipe this card clean. We can only have one thing going on the card when we're doing the software update at a time or it will not work. We need to make sure we're set for FAT32 for the format type and go ahead and click Start. Here's the warning message that says, are you sure you want to do this? Because it's going to delete everything that's on the card. We want to click OK. 
progress bar comes up and now our format is complete. So now we're ready to load our software and this was our uh, RowPro software up here I'll do first. I'm going to right click on that link on that button and I'm going to do extract files. And it's going to ask me where I want to extract these files to. So again, we look down in our list. We find the SD card. I highlight that. Click OK. And it will extract that zip file onto the SD card. As a double check what we've got, we'll go back to my computer. We're going to go ahead and open up that card. And now the card that we formatted has the software on it to download the RowPro now on to the planner. Now now that you've got that done, don't just unplug your card out of the laptop or out of your computer, out of your card reader. You need to come down into your tray down here and find the icon that says safely remove hardware. And I'm going to right click on that and then I'm going to click on the SD card drive and I'll get the message safe to remove hardware. Always make sure you do that first to make sure you don't corrupt the data you've just loaded on the card. So there's my RowPro card ready to go. Now we're going to do the Working Set Master software. I'm going to insert the card. I got the message that it saw a card, so I'm going to just go ahead and go over to my computer. Right click on the drive. Format, make sure we're on FAT32. There's the warning message telling you that you're going to delete everything that's on the card. Go ahead and click OK and start. And now that is complete. So we'll go ahead and close those windows out. And now let's do the Working Set Master 2 update. So right click on that one, extract files. Highlight your SD card button, and OK. And now we're going to extract those files onto the card. Always a good idea to come back in and double check that you've got it. So I'm going to open up my computer, open up the card drive, and there's my folder and files to update the current Working Set Master software. Come down into my tray find that icon for safely remove hardware and take that card out. Now the last thing I'm going to need when we go to do the software update is anytime you do a working set master update you also need a, another SD card that you can do an export of your config files on. So what I'm going to do while I'm here at the computer I'm going to go ahead and plug in a third card I'm going to go back to my computer. There's the card drive. I'm going to go ahead and format it. Now, if you've got a card that has other things on it uh, or other config files on it, you don't want to take this step, of course, because it's going to erase the card. But I'm starting out with a fresh uh, format here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click OK. There, it's complete. Close that window down. Right click on safely remove hardware. Click on the SD card drive. And now we have a blank card that we can put our config files on. And that's all we need to do with the laptop. It's time to head to the planner and do the update. So now we're hooked up to the planner. We've got our terminal powered up. Um, getting ready to do the software updates. One of the first things we need to do, though, is make sure we can download a config file to save us some work in re-inputting the information. What we want to do is go up here to the virtual terminal button, and I want to come down to my additional functions button down here at the bottom and check the box that says task controller. That's going to enable this card reader to do its job. <clears throat> so we can do the software updates and save our config files and then re-import them when we're done. If your customer is not doing any operations such as 
um, as applied maps or prescription maps, probably want to come back in here and uncheck that box when you're done. Reason for that being is at the end of the day, if that box is still checked, the monitor is looking for a place to save all the information from what it did that day. And with no SD card in the slot, it's going to just continue searching for some port in the storm, so to speak. And it's going to stay powered on until it finds that and it can run the battery down in your tractor. So if he's not using that function of a task controller with the 10 inch, we need to make sure we uh, uncheck that box to disable it when we're done. So we'll go back into our IntelliEgg screen. Now to do any of these updates, we're going to need to sign into the dealer level. Anytime the monitor powers up, it's in operate mode, which means you have limited ability to make changes or programming within the terminal. The way we sign into the dealer level is we want to go, um, we'll start out with our diagnostics button. And you can notice on the diagnostic screen that most of these boxes are kind of grayed out. When you're in the dealer level, those boxes will all be in yellow, indicating that you can change those items. We're going to push the password key. And now we're looking at a window that displays a six digit passcode. And the passcode is, the first number is a two, and then your last five numbers are the serial number of the working set master on the planner. To find that serial number, you've got two options. You can either go back to the center of the planner Find the physical working set master and read the serial number off of the label. Another option is to hit your info button right there on the screen. We've got a list of modules that are on the canvas in the planner. We want to find the WSMT PDCGY and note the serial number there right below that. In this case it's 10542. So with that information We'll come back to our pass key. Remember the first number is always a two. Second digit is a one. Now the second number of our pass of our serial number was zero, so we can leave that one alone. We want to go five, then four, then two, making our passcode two one zero five four two. Now click the OK button, and if we've entered the number correctly, we'll get the message dealer screens on at the bottom of the screen. Take it back to work screen. Now if we were to hit that summary key, you're going to see that all these boxes are in yellow, and that's the key indicator that we are in dealer level two. But where we actually want to go is we're going to go back to work screen and hit our next page uh, probably at least twice until we see this button here that's the SD card config. Let's go ahead and touch that key. This is where we're going to export our config files so that we can re-import them when we're done doing our software update. Remember we formatted that blank SD card. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open the door now. There's a slide button on the side. You just put your finger on that and slide it up. The door pops open. Your SD cards, it's important to note how to put those in. You see one side of them has these copper contacts on it. Those contacts need to go towards the outside of the console with the notch of the card on top. Slide it in there gently and just give it a little gentle push until it clicks in place and it should hold in there. Close the door down. Now if you're going to save multiple uh, planner config files on a card you can. These cards will hold literally hundreds of separate config files, but in order to make sure that you keep track of whose config file is what, <clears throat> we always recommend that you give your config file a name and that that name be the serial number of the planner. So in this case, I know my serial number, so I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. When you hit the caps key, that just brings your letters up to a capital. And there's my serial number entered. Hit my green check mark. Now I have an export file name that is the serial number of this planner. I want to hit export. We're going to get the message down here that says exporting data and have a 
hourglass flashing up here at the top. We're going to just let that go and at some point that hourglass will disappear and we should get a message on the bottom that says exporting data success. Again, what we're doing here is saving all the material and channel setups, um, module configurations, row spacings, all that sort of thing is being saved as a config file. It's not a bad idea at all while you're waiting for this to happen. Um, get you a piece of uh, paper and a pencil may be handy. There's a few settings you may want to jot down just as a backup. Um, there's our exporting data success. I'm going to go ahead and remove this card. We're done with that, but we want to keep it for later when we're done. Let's go back to the work screen. And one of the pages I want to take you to, to to kind of explain some of the things we might want to do as a backup, I want to hit the next screen until I see the button that says module config. Right there it is. And on this page we've got all our modules listed. Um, they are addressed one through eight in this case. Um, it is important the order that those modules appear in this list. If those modules get misordered as they appear on the planner, then you can get some false information for row blockages or your row pro or your swath control clutches may not work properly. One method to save that, that we've had some success with, success with is to take a cell phone picture of your screens. Um, that way you have a absolute record of what that screen was at that time. We have had some customers that will go out and they'll take a screenshot of every screen going through their config and there's not, a, there's not a thing wrong with that. That's a good record to keep on hand. It's a backup to your config files in case there's a problem with the data, it gets corrupt or it doesn't re-import correctly. We're gonna go ahead and go back to the work screen and we're gonna go ahead and start with our first software update. Um, when when we're doing this update with the RowPro software, we need to make sure we do it first. Um, we're going to go in here and take a look at our info page again. And we're going to go down here and find our first down pressure module, which is WSMB. DPLCM and you're going to see that my software version here is 2.08. Also note that it's on address 4. If I go to my next, I'm going to find my other DPLCM. It's also at 2.08 and it's at address 7. My working set master software is now at 6.1 and it's at address 5. But back to the work screen, we're going to go ahead and power down the console. So I'm going to uh, shut off power to my console. I'm going to disconnect the cable out of the back of the terminal so that you can see that I've got it unplugged and it's completely powered down. I'm going to slide the switch to open my SD card slot. Make sure we do copper contacts to the outside with the notch on top insert it gently until it clicks in place, close the door, reconnect the harness, and turn power back on to the console. What's going to happen with this process, you're going to see the monitor power up like, it's, like it normally would. It's going to start into its programming process. In this case, on this planner, we have two down pressure modules. So it's going to go through its programming process. It's going to look like it's done, but then it's going to start over again, and that's normal. It's going to program just one module at a time. So here we are starting into our programming process.
you're gonna see a message on there where it says programming complete. Don't take that to mean that you're done. Just wait till it gives you the message. You, we will get a box in the center of the screen telling you that the update was successful along with instructions on what to do to restart the monitor. So we just need to wait for that message and, and let it do its thing. Okay, and here's the message we're looking for. Please follow these steps to reboot the terminal. Step one, remove the SD card. So I'm gonna slide the switch and just give a gentle push on the card till it pops out. Close the door. Now I'm gonna push the reboot key and the monitor will power itself down and then come back up um, with the new software loaded on the RoPro modules. It will not be unusual for us to see a couple of alarms here in the programming process. It takes that module offline and we had, in this case, we had our RoPro modules on address four and seven. So we should get alarms when the, when the IntelliEgg comes back up that we lost communications with modules on addresses four and seven. Okay, member can communication lost. We just want to hit our number one soft key up here to acknowledge. Member module that had previously failed communication has come online and there's our addresses four and seven indicating those ROPRO modules. We'll go ahead and let it finishing its install here. And we'll go ahead and go to summary. I'm gonna hit the password key, but I'm, I'm just using that as a tool to get to my info key. DPLCM at address four. My software version on that is now 4.0, where I was 2.08. If I hit my next info, there's my other DPLCM software version is 4.0 so that software update was successful our next update is going to be on the working set master in this case we're stepping up to 6.4 so i'm going to go ahead and take power away from the terminal again disconnect the cable out of the back of the console open up my sd card slot Copper contacts to the outside with the notch on top. Push it in until it clicks in place. Close the door. Reconnect the harness and reestablish power. This software update is going to work similarly at the beginning but we're going to have some differences that are going to happen um, you'll notice my switches here at the bottom when the programming process starts it's going to take the working set master offline from the can bus while it's working so these lights that are communicating with the working set master should start flashing once the programming process begins It's important to note when you're doing these updates, especially when you're doing the working set master update, when the working set master goes offline, the clutches and other solenoids on your planner 
do not have instruction on what to do, so their default is to operate. If you have electric clutches, their default is to be engaged. So on a three section planner, you would be drawing upwards of 15 amps while you're just sitting there doing software updates. If your tractor batteries are weak, you may have a power issue, and that's something we really don't wanna have happen when you're in the middle of a software update. So if at all possible, have a tractor connected to the planner and have the tractor running so that we keep a good steady supply of power to the system while we're doing the update. So now our communication is established and it's starting to program the working set master and there's a random flash pattern on the lights of my clutch fold module indicating that the working set master is offline. This process can take some time and you may think at some point that it's stuck and it's not moving anymore and be tempted to try to cycle power and start over. Be patient, it, it is a process that takes a few minutes and it will complete. I've, I haven't had one not complete yet, so stick with it and it will give you a similar message to what we saw at the end of the RoPro software update. Okay, now here's our message that the programming is complete. Please follow these steps to reboot the terminal. Step one, remove the SD card, so slide it open. Just give the card a little push and it'll pop out. Remove the SD card. Close the door back up and then press the reboot key. And it's gonna power down and power back up. Now when the power comes back up, it's gonna be different than when we did the RoPro updates or any other member module updates. In this case, since the Working Set Master was programmed, it's now basically had its memory and everything wiped clean. So it's like hooking up to a planner for the first time. And we're going to have to reload that object pool. So as it powers up at some point, we'll get a progress bar across the bottom of the screen and it will populate green as it comes across there while it's making its first communications with the new programming of the working set master. That process takes a, takes a few minutes. So there's our, our progress line uploading data. It's basically uploading the planner for the first time again to load that object pool. When this process is complete, just as we had with the module, the member module software update, we're gonna have a series of alarms that come up and that is normal. As they come up, we'll talk about what they are and we'll just acknowledge them and move on. Once we get the working screen up and running, we'll go ahead and sign back into our dealer level two and import our config file back in and those alarms that initially come up will all be resolved. You might notice while we're waiting on this to go that our clutch fold module down below here, my lights aren't flashing anymore, but my left center and right clutch switches are not lit. And that is because when we reprogrammed the working set master, it lost all of its clutch assignments. So it doesn't know where to assign rows. It's not seeing rows, it's not seeing clutch assignments. So those lights are blank. And once we do our config file import, those should come back on for us. Here comes our IntelliAg object pool. And we should start in with some alarms. Okay, new member module has come online and it's seeing a whole uh, list of modules that it didn't expect to see. So we'll just cancel that. We've got a series of row sensors that are showing up on different module addresses that it's not expecting to see. And notice how those addresses are at two and three for member modules, which is not where we want them. But go ahead and acknowledge that. It's seeing a hopper sensor that it didn't expect to see. So we'll just acknowledge that and we'll go ahead and load our work screen here now.
Notice there's no settings up here really at all other than some default numbers. There's no rows showing up below. This is a blank planner, a blank slate. So let's start out with our, in, our summary button. Again, most of our screens are blanked out as they will. Anytime you cycle power on the machine, it's gonna come back up in the default of operate mode. So we're going to hit our password key and remembering our password, we're gonna re-enter that. Getting our message that dealer screens are on. We wanna go back to the work screen. And just to show you what happens when we do a software update in the Working Set Master, we're going to go into Module Config. And anytime we start up with a new system, it's always going to want to put your Working Set Master up in the number one uh, address. And then all the rest of your modules are going to appear by serial number. So what I want to do is show you the picture that we took of that module address screen before we signed off and did the update and you can notice now that the addresses are, are not the same at all everything is scrambled on that so what we need to do to fix that is re-import our config files that we did at the beginning so let's go back to work screen and again, we want to hit our next page button until we find that SD card config. Go ahead and touch that key. And it's going to say no memory card found. So we've got our config file card. Open the door. Contact points to the outside notch on top. Slide it in there gently until it locks in place and close the door. As it recognizes that card, it's, it'll bring up some extra buttons and it's not finding any import data. It's looking for an import file name and that's not the file that we saved. Remember, we saved our config as the serial number of the planner. So if we hit the next button, what it should do is go out and search the card for any other config files that may be on there. And if you've got several config files on your card, you just need to continue that process until you find yours. Now there's my file of the serial number that I saved earlier. As soon as it recognizes that, I now get the import button. So if I push that, I'm gonna get an import data validation and I should get the importing data with the hourglass coming up here while it's doing that. And then when it's done, I'll get the message importing data success. And it should, if everything has worked properly for us, it should put everything back in that was there before we started the process today. When the import process is done and it says importing data success, what we'll do then is remove the SD card and up here at the number one key will be a button that says power down. And we need to hit that button and basically let the monitor power back down and restart with those settings re-entered and it'll reconfigure itself. importing data success we want to go ahead and remove that card so just give it a little push and release and the card will snap free close the door and then hit our power off button and it's going to reboot itself with the settings back in place
there's the message showing that our SD card is out and notice we have no IntelliAg object pool as it gets loaded back in that object pool will pop back up on the screen okay there's our IntelliAg object pool so we'll go ahead and press that now And we've got a screen now that looks a lot more like it did when we started the process. We've got all our settings in place and it looks like it's ready to go to the field and plant. We're just waiting on our rows to load up here at the bottom. There they come. We do want to take one more step. Um, let's go ahead and sign back in to the dealer level two. So we'll start out with our summary key. Notice all our screens are grayed out for the most part and that's indicating that we're in operate level one. So password, we're gonna enter that same password that we've been doing. Hit okay, dealer screens on. And we'll hit the summary key. Now all our boxes are in yellow, so we're unlocked and we can get in there and, and uh, do some editing with what we've got going on. But what I wanna look for is module config. And we've got all our modules addressed on here. Remember we took the cell phone picture earlier. What we wanna do now is just come back in here and make sure that our modules are back in the correct order. I'm starting out with 12, 674, 10495, 132, 11, 101, 05, 10452, 10509, 10147, 10146. So all these modules are in order. While you're in here, it's probably a good idea to go back through your quick start and just review. Everything should be there. And once you're satisfied that everything's back in order, you're ready to go back to the field and, and plant some seed in the ground. Don't forget before you leave the planter, uncheck that task controller box. If you have a customer again that's doing as applied mapping or prescription mapping, you would leave that checked. But if not, we wanna uncheck that. There, therefore, when we power down, it'll go ahead and power down and it won't stay on and drain the battery. And we're done with our software update and ready to move on to the next job. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have good success with your software updates.